Way back in 2006, I worked on a show for a channel called the Fox Reality Channel. Uh, it was a show called Solitary, and it was a crazy show where they put contestants alone in a pod, and then they mentally tortured them, and the last one standing would win $50,000. And that's the amount of money I nearly got sued for. Some publications are labeling the show as torture for entertainment. So I was hired to be a contestant handler, which sounds uh, entirely inappropriate, but really I was just there to handle the contestants' belongings. When the show hired me, they wanted me to lead the contestants before the show, one by one, to a undisclosed location with blindfolds on, and they suggested I find a motel downtown Los Angeles where I could go through their belongings and double-check their personal items. So I looked into it, and for some reason, no motel wanted that to happen inside their premises, even cheap motels downtown L.A. I can't imagine why not. So it was the night before the production began, and I wanted to be a hero, so... So in the end, I suggested, why don't we just use my apartment, I'll clear it with my landlord, and we can bring the contestants to my house, and I'll go through their stuff there. And they loved it, and I was, like, starting off with a bang with this job. Before arriving to set... And the blindfold comes off. Contestants Welcome are allowed to, to bring light. three personal items to solitude. I'm going to go through your bags. We're not going to go through your clothes, but let's just go through your items real fast. We have a... Hey, there we do. Here's my art book. Sweet. This is my training knife. It's plastic. Plastic. Is that yep. good? That is fine. That's Yay. Holes in it. We know it's plastic. The contestants had no idea where they were being driven to. The rule was that they had to keep their blindfolds on inside the car at all times and never, if they took their blindfold off, they would go home. And the show even made sure they had like two extra swing contestants that could be popped in in case one of the main contestants dropped out. That's my foam roller. This is your foam roller. Any racquetballs right here? Cool. A little Buddha statue. We have the Book of Mormon right there. Okay. So when a PA came forward and told me that the contestant in the car was threatening to take off his blindfold and he was getting really upset, I basically said, okay, send him home. Because that's what I've been told. If they won't participate, if they break the rules, they go home. No, it's Marisa. Chris is out. Doesn't want to wait. No, he's pissed. He's not happy right now. He said he's going to quit, so... Cool. All right. Well, he's done. Um, that red bag is his, you know, with the weights in it? Yeah. Take that back down to him and drive him home. Hey, Chris, you can take your blindfold off. Why? Uh, they're sending you home. He couldn't wait two hours. Later on, about a week into the shoot, the production got a formal lawsuit from the contestant I had sent home. You know, I don't, I'm not impressed. You know, you pick me up in this ragged car, you know, not, you know, I'm just not impressed with the production. You know, that's it. And then you bring me to someone's apartment. I just don't, I just don't think that, I don't even know if this will even get on the air. I mean, I'm just glad to be going home. See ya, take care. He was suing the show for $50,000 in loss of potential winnings. And the executive producers, who were my bosses, they basically turned to me and they said, what went on there? And I said, I did what you told me to do. And they said, who are you as a lowly contestant handler to send somebody home? Take that back down to him and drive him home. I tried to explain that I was following their rules and that they had told me that this, but and if somebody had broken the rules, that I was to send them home. Well, they told me I'd better get a lawyer because if this lawsuit went through, I would personally be responsible for the $50,000 out of my pocket. Of course, I was young and completely terrified that this could happen. Uh, they were also threatening to fire me, and I knew I was in deep trouble. However, then they realized that there had been behind-the-scenes cameras filming the road to solitary behind the scenes. So they went back and they watched the tape. They saw what had happened. They saw that I was in good standing to send the guy home because he refused to, to leave his blindfold on. And the video you're watching basically cleared my good name and kept me from living in a cardboard box. Ah, uh, reality TV.